We are in what appears to be the waning days of session. Tension is running high and neither side seems prepared to blink. After budget negotiations stalled last week, the House rolled out their spending plan in an effort to jumpstart talks. On Monday, the House Appropriations leaders unveiled a $31.8 billion spending plan for the 2024-2025 fiscal year. The plan is certainly dead on arrival in the Senate. However, the plan does include a few interesting provisions. The per first provision deals with the pre-apprenticeship certificate training program. Currently, that is funded at $200,000 a year. That would be bumped up to $275,000 a year under this plan. The next provision would require the Department of Public Instruction to allocate financial resources to each school to provide one full-time CTE coordinator to support students in the sixth and seventh grade. The final in an industry related change would lower the MPDES stormwater general permit fee from $120 down to $100. This fee was mistakenly increased last year during negotiations with DEQ over increased efficiencies within the department. The budget will be a hot topic going into potentially the last week of session next week. We will be sure to keep you up to date. Senate Bill 166, 2024 Building Code Regulatory Reform took a small step forward this week. The annual building code legislation is our top legislative priority and contains nearly 30 provisions intended to decrease the regulatory burden on the home building industry. On Thursday, the Senate Commerce and Insurance Committee heard the legislation for discussion only. The intent of this meeting was to allow the Senate members to review the changes that were made in the House. The bill is expected to take a move forward next week as the Senate continues to get to work. Our team will continue to stress to lawmakers the importance of this legislation as regulations are proving too costly for potential home buyers. House Bill 385, Various Energy and Environment Changes, was heard in the Senate Judiciary Committee on Wednesday for discussion only. As previously reported, the bill contains an important provision for coastal builders dealing with CAMA permitting. Furthermore, the bill contains a provision that limits the ability of local government units to require an applicant for water and sewer to agree to any condition that is not authorized by law. This bill will be heard again in the Senate Judiciary Committee next week before it heads to the floor. The nomination of Todd Brown, the governor's nominee for the North Carolina Business Court, which hears complex cases dealing with business issues, passed the Senate Judiciary Committee on Wednesday. Todd enjoys universal support from the business community as well as the plaintiff's bar. His nomination will have one stop in the Senate Nominations Committee before heading to the Senate floor next week. Finally, on Wednesday, Jim Gillen was successfully confirmed for a second term on the North Carolina Industrial Commission after passing the House 104 to 0. Governor Cooper first nominated Jim Gillen to serve as a, a commissioner in January 2019, and he was unanimously confirmed by the General Assembly that year. Mr. Gillen began his career with the Industrial Commission in 1994. One of the major provisions included in the Workers' Compensation Reform Act of 2011 was to subject the six members of the North Carolina Industrial Commission who are appointed by the governor to legislative confirmation. The Industrial Commission is vital to ensure workers' compensation, compensation rates remain reasonable for our members. That concludes our report for this week. For more information, read our written legislative report. See you next week.